Hello Tigers and welcome to the TMN TV newscast for Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. Stay tuned for the latest news at Jorge State University and around Northwest Kansas and the nation. I am Lauren Davis and Jenna Holly will be here shortly with a look at what's going on around the globe. And Haley White will fill you in on what's happening in the sports world. But first, here's what's making news in Tigerland. The food service provider to the FHSU campus opened up its doors to a few student government association members recently to give them an inside look. Chartwells recently has come under fire from the SGA for numerous health code violations. Senators began looking into the history of Chartwells and past violations upon hearing complaints from students. SGA President Brad Demers and Legislative Affairs Director Katie Wisely recently toured the campus dining facility in McMidas Hall. The two were shown the kitchen station and informed about day-to-day -day operations. Chartwell's officials have said they are open to hearing from FHSU students about any concerns they might have. A plan is in place to implement change to comply with the health code violations. SGA members and the university will continue to work with Chartwell's to recidivize re the situation. Changes also will be coming to scholarships offered by Fort Hayes. At the recent SGA meeting, senators learned the university will change from F how FHSU awards scholarships to fit into the strategic growth plan. TMN's Corey Lynn reported that instead of awarding scholarships based on ACT scores of 21 or higher, the new plan will lower the required score and take into account a student's grade point average in high school. FHSU officials said the GPA is a greater indicator of how successful students will be in college compared to an ACT score. Students feeling a bit stressed or missing their pets got a treat recently on the quad as Alpha Sigma Alpha hosted Dogs on the Quad. TMN reporter Gary Lee has this report. ASA Dogs in the Quad activity was held on September 24th at 11 a.m. at Memorial Union Quad. There are many dog lovers at Fort Hayes, and it is a good choice for them to do some exercise while walking dogs. It would be better if there is a party for these puppies playing together, which would be benefit for puppies' mental and physical health. Therefore, the dog owners in ASA organize such a dog party regularly to share their feelings and knowledge of having dogs in the family because of the same hobby of raising puppies.
In this activity, puppies are happy to play around because they make a lot of new friends. From Tiger Media Network. Mother Nature might have performed the closing act, but before then, numerous bands rocked out at the Rockalua Music Festival on September 21st in Hayes. The annual event provides an opportunity for bands to play on stage in the park. The music showcased a wide genre. For more, see TMN reporter Emily Woodyard's story at TigerMediaNet.com. FHSU students got a touch of home last weekend at the annual Family, family Day. The Department of Student Engagement hosted the event to give students a chance to see and reconnect with family and friends. The day consisted of numerous activities including a fishing derby, shopping spree, dance along, and face painting. Many campus organizations hosted individual activities and participants also had an opportunity to see the FHSU football teams win against Missouri Southern. Elementary school students got an up-close and personal look at how food travels through the body at a recent exhibit in Cunningham Hall. Kindergarten through fifth grade students were able to go on the Body Venture Tour, an event sponsored by Child Nutrition and Wellness as well as the Kansas State Department of Education. The main goal of the event was to teach students to eat well and exercise. The day included a 45 foot by 50 foot Body Venture Tour that represented the human body, according to TMN reporter Riley Breton. FHSU students in the HHP department as well as the Teach Education program helped throughout the day. A total of more than 150 people volunteered. More than 600 elementary students attended the event. A weekend party ended with police on the scene near Great Bend. Barton County deputies were dispatched to a residential area Sunday morning after reports of shots being fired. Four people received minor injuries but were not seriously injured. According to the Tribune News, an investigation found there was a disturbance during the social gathering where at least one round was fired. The report stated the suspect who fired the weapon left the area but returned. A passenger then fired a shotgun into the crowd. Possible suspects have been identified, but no arrests have been made. Forsyth Library, in partnership with Sigma Tau, hosted a button-making event to raise awareness about the censorship of books in libraries worldwide. Team and reporter Lexi Gross filled this report. There was no silencing these students on campus last week. The Forsyth Library and Sigma Tau held a button-making event in order to raise awareness about the censorship of books. Students were able to select a quote that protests the censorship of books and then have them made into a button. Displays in sidewalk chalk show just how many classic books are banned due to different perceptions. Students like Devin Patchen said that these books have issues that need to be talked about and understood from the other perspectives. Due to censorship, a lot of these classic literature books are being taken off the shelves. Volunteer Stacy Rupp said one of their goals is to bring these books back to those that may not have access to them. This has been Lexi Gross reporting for Tiger Media Network. When we return from this short break, Jenna will be here with news from around the globe. My name is Allie and I'm a senior business major at Fort Hayes. I love working for TMN. It has made me a more experienced photographer and really helped me professionally due to all the changing environments and the different opportunities. I've also been able to meet and talk to a lot of people which has helped bring me on my show. Hello Tigers, I'm Jenna Holly, and here's what's happening around the globe. The whistleblower now in the national headlines is concerned for his safety after his complaint caused a flurry of attacks from President Donald Trump. The unidentified whistleblower's lawyer wrote a letter to Acting Director of National Intelligence Joseph McGuire warning that he could be put in harm's way if his identity is disclosed. According to the New York Daily News, the lawyer cited President Donald Trump's reported statements that the whistleblower is a spy who should be harshly punished. The president demands to know the identity of the whistleblower in defiance of federal law that bar bars any retaliation against those who file whistleblower complaints. The lawyer also cited reports of social media posts made by Trump supporters that offer a $50,000 reward for the identity of the whistleblower. The U.S. Department of Justice will intervene in a fight over President Donald Trump's tax returns. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York sent a letter to Judge Victor Marrow said, saying he plans to join the case. According to Politico, Manhattan DA Cy Vance subpoenaed eight years of President Trump's personal and corporate tax returns 
from the president's accounting firm as part of an investigation into hush money payments that made to women who said they had sexual encounters with Trump. Trump sued in federal court to block the subpoena. During a hearing last week, a judge put a brief stay on the subpoena. Trump's lawyers argue that he cannot be subject to a criminal investigation as president. Vance's lawyers argue the case should be decided by state courts and not federal. Trump has refused to make his taxes public as pre previous presidents have done before him. Family and classmates of a Tennessee teenager who killed himself after being outed have demanded the school and state authorities investigate and prosecute those responsible. The student, Channing Smith, reportedly took his own life last week after sexually explicit text messages he exchanged with another classmate were posted on social media. A few hours after the messages were shared, Smith shot and killed himself. According to the New York Times, students of the school have set up a Facebook group called Justice for Channing and organized a rally Channing's mother addressed a crowd at one of the vigils saying, just because you think it's cute or funny to make somebody embarrassed or humiliate them, think again. Because if somebody would have realized that, my son would not be dead. Channing's older brother argued that administrators had, tampered, had tamped down the attempts of students to call attention to his death, as well as noted state officials had not brought criminal charges against anyone in the case. Actor Tom Cruise met with Ukraine's president amid the U.S. impeachment scandal. The president's press office said Cruise was interested in filming one of his new movies in the country. Before venturing into politics, the Ukrainian president was a successful media producer, actor, and comedian. His office said the president of Ukraine told the guest about his own experience in cinema. According to NBC News, the Ukrainian president also pointed out that a recently passed law on subsidies for foreign filmmakers in Ukraine is meant to attract an attract investment in the country's economy. A transcript was released last week of a July phone call between the Ukrainian president and U.S. President Donald Trump. Many believe the transcript suggests Trump was asking for help from the Ukrainian president on investigating a political rival. The president has denied being pressured by Trump. A protester in Hong, in Hong Kong was shot in the chest after a police officer opened fire during China's celebration of the 70th anniversary of the communist-led government in Beijing. A video, a video of the incident showed a dozen black-clad protesters hurling objects at a group of riot police pursuing them. In the video, one officer draws his revolver and points it at the group. According to Al Jazeera, he fired and one protester collapsed on the street while the others fled. The protester was in critical condition and underwent emergency surgery, according to Al Jazeera's Sarah Clark. The incident is the first time a protester has been shot since the start of months-long unrest in the city. A violent attack at a vocational school in eastern Finland left at least one dead and 10 others injured, including two with serious injuries. A Finnish police spokesman told CNN that a male suspect is in custody after he used it, a bladed weapon during the incident. According to CNN, one witness said a man, a man came onto the college premise, brandished a sword, and began stabbing people. The police spokesman said the suspect also was carrying a firearm, but did not say if he used it during the attack. Congress has voted to end the national emergency President Trump declared in February. The state of emergency resulted in the redirecting of more than $3 billion from Congress's budget towards building the border wall. The final House vote was 236 to 174, and the final Senate vote was 54 to 41. According to Tribune News Service, this is enough to challenge a state of emergency, but not enough to, co to contest a likely veto from Trump. A similar conclusion was reached in the spring when Trump vetoed the initial movement and the emergency. That's what is happening in the news world this week. Stay tuned for a sports update with Haley White when we return. Tiger Media Network is the independent student media organization here at Fort Hayes State University. It encompasses audio, video, print, photography, digital news. There's a little bit of everything at TMN. They offer so many different events, opportunities, so many different things to go out and do and learn so that you can make a more compelling story. 
and just help develop you as a storyteller. I toured this facility and I saw this radio station and then the TV studio and I was like, yeah, this is something that I definitely need to be a part of. Here, you know, I was, I was instantly able to make my own content, being able to broadcast my own shows. If you have a passion about sports or about news, it doesn't matter. You can come here and you can work from day one and get that experience that demonstrates your ability to be a professional in the media industry. Hello Tigers, I'm Haley White bringing you a sports update. FHSU football captured its first win at Lewis Field Saturday night after holding the thriving offense of Missouri Southern to a field goal the entire contest, beating the Lions 44-3. The Tigers shut out Missouri Southern during the first half, all while having no trouble finding the end zone to take a 20-0 lead at halftime. Manny Ramsey was the first Tiger to collect seven as he caught a 13-yard pass from Chance Fuller. Harley Hazlett followed with a 51-yard touchdown reception after FHSU defense held the Lions to a 3-and-out. Hazlett also scored the first two touchdowns for the Tigers during the second half with receptions of 3 and 22 yards and went on to hold the team high of 123 receiving yards on eight catches. DJ Hickman also found himself in the end zone with a 3-yard run to bump the Tigers score to 41. Kicker Dante Brown added three field goals to the score throughout the contest, producing his final goal of 18 yards during the fourth quarter. The All-American found himself tied for the all-time field goals made record at FHSU with Wes Simonu. Tiger defense held the Lions to the least amount of points they have scored in a contest all season. FHSU intercepted Missouri Southern quarterback four times with contributions from Hayden Kreitzer, Isaiah Creel Musgray, and Drew Harvey. Harvey led the Tigers in tackles with 12 while adding two sacks, two pass breakups, and a deflected pass that resulted in one of the, touch in one of the interceptions. The Tigers will be on the road this Saturday with a potentially season-determining matchup against Central Oklahoma. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. in Edmond. After two overtime periods, FHSU men's soccer took a draw with Wachita Baptist Thursday as both teams concluded the match producing two goals. Antonio De La Torre and Santiago Agudelo were the scores for the Tigers during the contest. Despite the tie, the Tigers finished strong on offense as they tripled the amount of shots taken than Wachita with 20. FHSU offense dominance continued through during the men's match on Saturday as the Tigers beat Harding 8-1. The Tigers shut out Harding during the first period while scoring five goals to head into halftime. Their offensive efforts continued in the second period as three more tig Tigers successfully found the back of the net and the defense only gave up one goal. The win was the second largest margin victory in FHSU program history as the team missed the all-time record by just one goal. Agudelo scored three goals and added an assist over the two-game span for the Tigers, which led him to earn the GAC Men's Soccer Offensive Player of the Week for the second week in a row. The team also bumped up to number 21 in the latest United Soccer Coaches Top 25 poll. The Tigers will return home this week for a match against Newman University on Saturday. It was a second half goal by Kaylee Perkins that led FHSU women's soccer to take a 1-0 win over Washburn on Friday. During the victory, senior goalkeeper Megan Niefel picked up her 18th career win at 12 and 12th shutout, which puts her in a tie for second place for her career victories at FHSU. However, tough weather conditions on Sunday was too much adversity for the Tigers to go 2-0 on the week as the team fell to Emporia State 2-1 during the MIAA opener. The Tigers dropped to 4-3 overall and 0-1 in MIAA play. The Tigers head to Edmond, Oklahoma to seek their first conference win against Central Oklahoma on Friday. After splitting weekend play at home, FHSU Volleyball began this week of play on a high note after knocking off Emporia State in four sets on the road after beating the Hornets inside Gross Memorial Coliseum a week before. The Tigers moved to 6-7 and seven overall and 3-2 and two in MIAA play with a pair of conference matches ahead in Missouri. The Tigers will first travel to Maryville to take on Northwest Missouri State on Friday, followed by a matchup against Central Missouri Saturday in Warrensburg. It was a good week for both FHSU cross-country teams as the men and women took a first-place finish at the Emporia State Inventational over the weekend. 
For the second consecutive race, the men finished first overall, led by Justin Moore, as he finished the race in nearly 27 minutes and 46 seconds. Coming behind Moore were his teammates Sepe Von Westiende, Robbie Schmidt, Peter Franklin, and Caleb Crum, as, packed, as they packed together to earn a score of 40 on the day. The women also earned first place for a second consecutive race, as the Tigers found themselves in an even draw with Rockhurst, as both teams scored 37. A head-to-head -head matchup was what determined the Tigers as the winners, and Abigail Stewart solidified the win, finishing in 20 minutes and 14 seconds. FHSU will be home for its next race as the team hosts the FHSU Tiger Open on Saturday, October 12th. The Kansas City Chiefs left its fans on the edge of their seats Sunday afternoon after the Chiefs es escaped Motor City with a nail-biting 34-30 win against the Detroit Lions. After scoring an easy 10, the Lions the Lions took an early lead in the contest, forcing quarterback Patrick Mahomes and his offense to settle for a field goal during the second drive. Both defenses forced each other to a three and out, and it wasn't until the fourth drive of the first half before the Chiefs finally found the end zone on the run from LaShawn McCoy. The first half ended with a pair of field goals from both the Lions and the Chiefs, tying up the score with 13 heading into the third quarter. Both teams found more rhythm on offense during the second half as the teams alternated scoring both touchdowns and field goals during the following drives. As time was running out, the Chiefs found themselves in a 30-27 hole with the possession of the football. The Chiefs marched their way down to the field until the Lions defense was able to hold Kansas City to a fourth down outside the field goal range. The Chiefs went for it on fourth down and Mahomes took it on himself to convert with a 15-yard run. A 16-yard catch from Travis Kelsey put the Chiefs in field goal range. A 13-yard reception from wide receiver Byron Pringle gave the Chiefs first and goal to go, and Damian Williams punched it in to give the Chiefs a 34-30 lead. The only option Detroit had on offense before the clock ran out was to throw a Hail Mary pass, which was incomplete. The Chiefs improved to 4-0 on the season as they take on the Indianapolis Colts for a 7:20 p.m. kickoff Sunday night at Arrowhead. California's governor signed a first-in-the-nation law earlier this week that will allow college athletes to hire agents and make money from endorsements. The law is to take effect in the year 2023, where students at pu both public and private universities in the state will be allowed to sign deals with sneaker companies, soft drink makers, or other advertisers and make a profit while still in college. Though California's governor predicted other states will soon follow the legislation, Kansas's state representative, Jim Ward, said the Sunflower State will most likely not follow in Cali's footsteps. Ward, who supports California's law, said the NCAA's policies prohibit athletes from earning a wage that is fair compared to the amount of profit universities make off of their labor. He said the policies also have an equity issue because coaches can have endorsement contracts with companies while athletes cannot. He said a bill could be filed in Kansas and may receive a hearing, but he said it's doubtful it would get any further than that. That concludes this episode. Tune in next week for another episode of TMN TV. To stay up to date on the latest news and information throughout the week, visit TigerMediaNet.com. Until then, remember, Roar Tigers!